All righty. Hello. Hello, Facebook. I am so close to this screen. I have to fix this. But hello, let's fix some, some of this because I am super duper close to this screen. And I hear a child. Okay, go get a banana. Taylor, contact to it, Tabitha. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, go get a banana. Go get a banana. Get get a banana. Yeah, give him a banana and then tell Tabitha to get him. Oh, we're gonna get a banana. Hi. Yeah. That's fine, but tell Tabitha to get him. All righty. Hey, great people. <laughs> Y'all, listen, I'm going to fix this video before I get started because I am so close to this and I'm using Zoom because I am going to be recording this. Jeez. I need to try a different background. Let's do that. Y'all, okay? Say hi if you're here. Y'all gonna see me change this background like right here. Y'all look extra close now. I still look close. She's so pretty. All right, great people. How are you doing? <laughs> Good evening. It is six o'clock past the six o'clock hour. And uh, um, I'm excited to be with you all tonight. Let me adjust this light, y'all. I'm just Shining right here. Okay, I hear me, so I'm live. Okay, good deal. All righty, so if you are with me this evening live, thank you for joining. If you will be watching later on with the replay, thank you for watching. Uh, and so this lesson is really a personal one, and y'all know how I like to do. I love share blessings and share correction. And if you clo you're close to me, that you know. Um, so this uh, particular lesson was something that God had gave me last month as I was preparing uh, for my own vision board and different things that are coming up in my life and recognized quickly that... Um, you can't keep adding things to your plate without taking some away or readjusting. And while I've been going through that in this season, it's really been prevalent um, right now in this space in my life. So I want to share with you some tips about how you decommit when you feel like you've overcommitted, when you feel like a lot is going on, transitions are going on, and how to manage that. So let me press record before I forget. And if you are watching, say hi. Also share the video. Tag a you know, number of different people. This is for men and women who, hey, this is the end of the year. And a lot of times we can just feel like we are on like 90 at all times, right? Like you're going 100 miles per hour. Um, that you just have to speed. There's so many things to catch up and there are so many things to do when actually um, there's a pace in the grace that God gives us. And we have to be careful as believers that, you know, we understand the season and then we understand how to utilize the tools and things that God gives us and the strategies, um, you know, to really just refresh, regroup, reset. Uh, every day that you are alive is an opportunity to do that. Uh, let me take a pivot and say that this uh, recording of this video is sponsored by Thrive Tribe. Me. 
<laughs> on this Sunday, I'll be having my annual vision board workshop. I do not know what number this is because you all know that I do this every year. Um, it's at no cost. And each year, if you have been attending the workshops, you know that God gives me uh, just, he elevates my delivery. He elevates the understanding. And I am always so thrilled to share that with you all. And uh, the thing for this year, it's comeback time, right? It's comeback season. It's time to build. It's time to rebuild. That many of us, we don't need new, right? We need a newness of um, certain certain attributes, right? But a lot of things, it's really just finishing what we started. And so that workshop will be held this Sunday at 6 p.m. Um, and uh, if you could drop that in there, uh, Taylor, as well, uh, to in the comments. So the workshop is online via Zoom. And as you signed up, I will share with you what you need. This is not really a cut um, an arts project type. I do not at all uh, go against that. You know, I love writing things down. I recognize I'm not the art and craft person. I used to try to do that and end up with about four stickers on my board. I'm just not arts and craft, but you give me a problem, I'm a strategist. I can solve it and I like systems and tools. So that's the that's what I bring to you. But most importantly, we all have a purpose. Each and every one of us have something that we are mandated to do for 2023. And my question is, do you know what that is? Do you know the gifts that you are to use uh, for 2023 and how God needs you to be effective with your life and how he can do that through, through you know, your talents and your strengths and all the greatness that's inside of, inside of you? And who are you to partner with? And, and you know, who are you to serve? Do you know that? And that only comes by knowing vision. And so um, I'm encouraging you all to register for the vision board workshop. All righty. So I'm going to get to the notes for um, our overview tonight. The goal is to be off by 6.30 because I know that it is Wednesday and it is Bible study night. I had no intention on coming on live at all. And so y'all know um, if when I get the unction and I'm led to um, do so, then that's what I do. So let's talk about Decommit December. The theme of Decommit December actually was given to me last month, again, in my own personal journey, that I had to realize, and I've been quickly realizing, and I'm going to say it again, that in order for you to acquire something, you actually have to be willing to let go of something. And I gave this analogy earlier um, when I sent an email, but I wanted to just read it to you. Like, have you felt ever felt like you can't add anything else to your plate, but you continually find yourself at the busy buffet? That's good, wasn't it? <laughs> but seriously though, like, you know, you always think, I cannot do one more thing. I cannot do anything else. If someone calls me, I can't do it. But then you find the time to do it. Well, it's not that you found the time. You just extracted that time from something else that you need to get done. And our society has glorified business to where even I was a part really of, it's an evil cycle. And I know you're probably saying, oh, my word, she's using the word evil, because if Ecclesiastes 3 tells us to everything, there is a season, and meaning there, there is a priority, um, and there is a balance, and there is a rhythm to every season, then to the opposite of that, which is a good thing that comes from God, it's not right, <laughs> right? It's just, and so... And again, I can tell you that because I have myself just like, oh, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. And really, too, we've kind of made busy a bad word because honestly, when you look at the totality of my life, I have five children. If I did nothing else but devote all of my time to my five children and uh, their activities, then yeah, I, <laughs> that's busy enough, right? And that's a good business. 
and then too with career and different organizations and ministries and and all of these other things so your load does add up but how many of you feel like now you are overloaded but you are a functioning overloadaholic I just literally, I know I, I just made that up, but you know, it just felt right to say uh, <laughs> in that. Um, so yeah, you know, you are continuing to function and actually to not be busy, uh, to not be productive makes you bored. And I get that. I promise you, I, I personally, I get, I get that. But what I'm also learning that I've had to learn heavily this year, oh my word, just some opportunities that were lost, some opportunities that I squandered, some things that happened um, that I'm like, oh man, if I had been a better steward of my time. But then also now some beautiful things that are happening with my family and with my career. It will now require for me to decommit from things. But I know that I'm not the only one in this space that I believe all of us can sit down and decommit. So I'm gonna walk you through that, all right? So what are some things that we need to decommit from? Now, everyone's list will be different, but I hope as you're watching this, you are taking inventory. And even if, you want to write it down and share, that would be amazing. And again, if you are watching this video, will you go ahead and like and love it? Will you share it? Will you tag three people in this video and tell them to hop on? We're going to talk about prioritizing, decommitting ourselves before we go into the new year um, with all of this baggage. What do we need to detach ourselves from? So that's the essence of this video. So please like, share, comment um, as well. And uh, uh, invite some people to attend the video. All right, to watch the video. Okay, so what do we need to decommit from? Our first thing that we should decommit from are unaligned activities with your purpose. Number one, unaligned activities with purpose. And so what does that mean? You know that everyone has a purpose and you know not to just go deep into that, you know, because some people are like, how do I look, unlock my purpose and how do I find my purpose? It's really a discovery because every, all you have is all you need. When God created everything in the earth, he put everything inside of himself. Like he created the apple, so he put the seed inside of it. And that's the same analogy for your life that the purpose that you have is inside of you and it just blossoms. Um, and as you uh, become more in tune with, um, with, with the kingdom, that's how I believe. Now, of course, people will have their own, you know, sayings and, and philosophical believings and all of this great stuff. But I truly believe you are born with purpose and that gets um, uh, discovered each year um, through experiences, through revelations and all of these grand things. A whole nother conversation, not a, not a long one, but it really is that your purpose is, is, is on the inside of you. And there are things that there are many good things to do in the world, but not everything requires your attention or can even have your time. Like for myself, there is no reason why I should be on the Acorn Association, you know, of the Ozarks, right? God has not called me to be, um, you know, a, a nature person like that to where, you know, my calling is to save the trees and go out and, and learn the different species in the jungle. I like watching like National Geographic and different things and that plant back, background, right? But that's not, <laughs> that's not with my purpose. But some of us, especially professionals, we will jump on anything in any association because we feel like this resume builders and there are clouts and, and different things. But you, if you want to maximize the greatness in your life, you cannot align yourself with things that are unaligned with your purpose. Everyone has a gift. You should always walk in those spaces that that elevates yours because on the other side of that gift is someone's help and someone's response to what you what God is doing through your life. 
So how we decommit um, and how we detach ourselves from things that just do not serve us um, because it, we can't serve people is one. Unalign, decommitting yourselves from an underlying activity with your purpose. Number two. Okay. This may, you know, I'm just saying it. This may, I'm not trying to rattle any feathers, you know, <laughs> or anything like that, but I'm going to talk to the women just right quick. One of the things that really gets to us is doing all of these small things that really yields low value return. Like, for instance, at our jobs, I talk to women all the time that are already stressed, that are already dealing with so much, that are already already um, have you know things going on, trying to balance and, and trying to um, you know be a great mother, and all of these things. And then they call you to you know throw the Christmas office party, or they call you in right to host a retirement you know going away party. And really, they call on women to do this. More women are called to do this. Let's just be honest, right? And you get exhausted from low-level activities. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to stay nice and in the vein. And that is just one example, but it could be translated over to numerous things that people can sometimes call on you because they know you are gifted in certain areas or because you just don't say no. So one of the things that we could do to, to detach ourselves, excuse me if I can get it out, but we have to stop over committing ourselves to low level activities and not saying that people don't need to be celebrated. Y'all have to see me in this pair, in this natural state. Yeah, okay. But, it, you know, not saying that none of those things are, they're, they're great. Life is to be celebrated. You've worked 50 years, someone has to be celebrated. But, you know, I, I have the personality to where I'm just looking around like, yeah, if it's going to require more than 30 minutes of my time planning this, we probably need to go out to eat. I have other stuff to do, right? And then you have to go home and work on a project because you've devoted now a half a day's work to planning this and cleaning up. And going around to Kroger and picking up the cake and all of this stuff, right? So I move on, so I won't keep rattling feathers. But you know what low-level activities are. It's the activities that you huff and puff about when no one is looking. The things that you really want to do and you put on the smile anyways, we are too grown for that. We are absolutely too grown for that. You have too many responsibilities. You have too much greatness to commit yourself to something that someone else can do because you don't want, you always want to seem like a team player. Like, oh, I'll do it. I'll volunteer. I'll go get the ice. Well, you better because all our drinks are just going to be cold. I'm not going to get it, right? And it's not even being mean. But if you have to talk about something, you shouldn't do it. So be commit. <laughs> I will go. Okay, number three, we have to decommit ourselves if we want to be the best and if we want to really dive into 2023 with the leap and with the assurance that we have a freshness, we're not taking on extra baggage, right? Because we are looking forward and doing the work of a fresh start, we have to get rid of time wasters. Now, this one hits me hard because I know that all of us may have some things that we do that are time wasters. And I know the number one thing people will go to is social media. Um, and we know that could be a time waster and it can also be a blessing. Social media, hey, Mark, you know. <laughs> um, but as well, though, you could, you know, find that when it comes to looking up um, your, so you're looking up some a cooking recipe or something on the internet and then all of a sudden you start scrolling because you see some sales going on you know or uh, you love a favorite show and every time you come in that 
you have to watch two, three hours of TV a night or, or something like that, right? And those are time wasters where you actually have something to do. I'm not saying things that you can't unwind and all this stuff because people will try to go down a rabbit hole. But those things that make you say, man, I know better, right? Or man, I don't need to be doing that. Or even when it comes down to talking on the phone, uh, the people that are really close to me know that when we talk, we do, we may talk an hour and guess what? It may be another week or two weeks before we even talk again, right? You know, and there's no, nothing lost. Um, and so whatever that is for you, find, figure that out and redirect that time to something greater that you know that you have to do, right? You know you need to um, you know, do something within your home or for your, for your children, for yourself, uh, for your business, whatever that is. But if you don't decommit yourself from time wasters, honestly, the same frustration that may have led your life this year, it'll only follow you until the next. So, um, you know, really do, really analyze that. And I'm going to walk you through actually moving on to the next part of this. I got to wrap this up of how do we de uh, decommit? So I walked through this exercise with my pastor who also serves as a number of things in my life, <laughs> but he's also um, an advisor, a business advisor for, for me um, because of the work that I do. And uh, uh, we walked through this exercise of really just really simple that I look at my life from a day, a week, and a month, and I write down all of the activities that I have to do. And I'm talking about all of the activities. Games, of course, your work or your business hours. You know, you have date night. You include that. You also include if you're in organizations, you all have meetings. If you're on committees and you have a meeting for the committee meeting, right? And then you have a general meeting. You have, you know, your, um, you volunteer somewhere. Everything that you do, write it down. And then calculate the number of hours that's expended to those things. And man, let me tell you, it was an eye opener. I actually cried. Um, of course, my schedule was heavily fixed with the business stuff and then with five kids and their and sports and all this stuff. That wasn't the issue at all. It was like looking at all of the auxiliary things, right? And all these other activities that um, I was in. And the meetings for the meetings, right? It was just, so I had to make an effort to decommit and I did some of that. And then I'm recognizing now in this season that I have to do more of that because I should have done a little bit better, but I was actually kind of scared to pull the plug on some things. And then now to where I just have to say, yeah, I can't do this position. I can't do this. I can't be here. I can't serve on this, um, especially this next year, which you all will be hearing about in less than one week. Just exciting news that's about to happen here in Northeast Arkansas and that God is allowing me um, um, to host in this season. So, but, but more on that. And so a part of adding something to your plate, you actually have to do the work to take something from it. We can't be at the busy buffet and just have this plate and just keep thinking we can just keep adding and adding and adding. And at the time you keep adding these layers of things, you know, like if you try to do it with food in a restaurant, you, you have to look around the plate to go sit down and get to your next step. And you just can't do that. And you grip, we can't do that for 2023. So take inventory, literally look at what you have to do in a day, what you have to do in a week and what you have to do in a month. And is it perfection? No, there are some times like I literally should not have went to something like a couple of days ago. Um, I went like 30 minutes and I, I quickly recognized that. And not that it wasn't even good uh, at all. It was like, yeah, 
this next thing that I'm doing in my life, I'm like, I can't even, I can't even do that in like 30 minutes. Now, leads me though to the point to where there are some activities that you have to decommit from. Maybe you need to, de you need to decommit um, the amount of time that you spend, right? Or if you are involved in an organization that it's like, well, I can't maybe hold office, right? Or I can't be on this committee, but actually, I can actually just be present, you know, um, and can maybe can, can participate. I can get my words out. I can participate, you know, this month, but I may not can participate in the next month and then be honest about it. And here is the thing. People are going to say this. You make time for what you want to make time for. You are exactly right. Absolutely. And you will not get me with that anymore in my life. No one can ever get me with that. You are exactly right. <laughs> so if I am MIA and if I tell you, hey, in this season, and especially now, and if you know me well, do you know this season, just even personally, I have a child that's graduating starting January. I'm already following her around as much as I can. It's really good. <laughs> you know, and then if you can't respect that, then that just further highlights why we really shouldn't be connected, whatever that capacity is, whether that's professional, social, it just is what it is, right? So, um, but take that inventory for sure. Um, learn to say no. Not right now, right? So sometimes you may do want to participate in things, but there's a board I actually do want to sit on and maybe serve one day, serve on one day, but I just can't right now. Um, so it is a not right now. So learn to say no or not right now. And or I may not be, can be a value, but I know someone of high caliber that I trust that I can vouch for that could add that same value to what you are needing, right? So don't be afraid to pass opportunities on and refer people um, because, you know, don't be stingy, right? Because there's enough of us, to, whether that's a project, career, whatever that is, it's enough to go around. Um, and you don't miss, you don't lose out on what's yours. All right. And how else can we decommit? Oh, accept that decommitment will go both ways. So as much as you need to decom decommit from things, people will also need to decommit from you. And I'm understanding that more and more, right? That as you need to break away, there are some things and maybe things that you have going on in your life and with your activities that people may need to break away from as well. And that's okay, right? Because too much is given, much is required that you can't go through your season and then not respect someone else's. And this is a very key thing to remember as you are pivoting with your time and pivoting with your priorities because you will take it personal when you are doing the same thing. So remember that grace. And it's so important to, to remember that in this season, if you are going to take the charge and decommit um, because you need to also understand how people deliver stuff to you so that you can deliver it well how people, you know, um, appreciate you so you can ensure that you show appreciation as well, right? You know, so um, this is a good time to also just do some reflection that as you need to take a break from things and people, people may need to take a break from you and the things that you do. And that's okay. That's just fine. All right. All right. Uh, last thing, my last mark I have. Oh, read more books. Okay, I know you're like, how is this about decommitting and, and detaching yourselves from things that, that you do not need to be aligned with? Because if you fill yourself with books, I'm, and I'm talking about like, every, people love, you can read whatever you want, want to read. I'm going to preface it. I will add, though, that <laughs> it is great to read those things that have like a high value content that expands your you know vocabulary that 
you can utilize, you know, tools that develops and elevates your spiritual growth, financial growth, professional growth, uh, ministry, family, right? You know, I understand people love romance novels, novels, and I get, and I get that. And I think people, you need that for you. You know, I would advocate for that being like 12 months of the year. Life is always about learning and refining. So just, you know, read more books because in two, if you invest and read more books, that also helps you decommit from doing those time wasters that we talked about earlier. All right. And then my last point in the decommitment is just to remember all you have is all you need. And I wanted to end with that point. When we are on this journey, if you're going to be doing your vision board or if you're just in this reflection state, as we are at the end of the year, you may feel like I need more money. I need more time. I need more people. And honestly, the closer and as you center yourself and as you really concentrate on what you already have, I promise you, it's not something that I'm telling you. I'm living this season right now that all you have is all you need. I give you an example. I've been, um, my business, I, I thank God, has really um, been on a forward trajectory. And I, I get to work my business with my daughter who is on here and, and posting the things and you see the posts and the flyers and all of this great stuff. She does that or my my bridge girls, my middles, who I call them the bridge girls, right? They or they work on the videos and things. I needed structure um, because I'm a visionary and I can help other people plan their processes. But for me, sometimes, you know, it's just kind of like, I need someone to help me get me in line. And I was able to bring on my husband. He really is my operations manager because literally, I mean, when I say rework my schedule, um, and just give me SOPs and things and his 20 years of working and now supervisor, his company is able to help me, right? And because I had to decommit myself from the things that like, I can't do this, right? It's so much and I, I, I'm never going to grow to the level that I know that I can grow as being the premier consulting agency in Arkansas for nonprofits and, and women businesses, right? And I, I just, I just felt like I was trapped. And then God had to remind me, like, look around. All you have is all you need. I have advisors and mentors and supporters. All I have is all I need. But if I am too busy with other things, if I, if, if I am committing my time, if I am not in intentional learning and mentorship, I would have missed it. And so I'm trying to tell you, don't miss it. If you decommit yourself from all these things that just do not add value, you'll see you have more than what you thought. All right. Okay. So with that end, I want to share with you about the vision board workshop again. If you hopped on late, the link should be, I'm not on Facebook, so I don't know because I'm on Zoom. The link is in the comments, right, Taylor? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So the vision board workshop um, comeback season, right? That there are some things that we just need to still operate in, in the grace that we're given and to execute. And it's like, oh, I need a new vision. A lot of us just need to execute on what we already know to do. My pastor always says this, that we are undeserving of the second step until we complete the first instruction. So child, I promise you, even as I said, I just got hit again. Uh, but <laughs> I really want to share with you again, you all know, I don't do any type of vision board class. It's more than a cut and paste. It's more than a project. It's more than kind of like, let me make a declaration and move on. You all know, I like practical living and application of God's instruction. I, uh, because I am living now in my application season and I'm seeing the fruit of it, how dare I not share it with with God's children and he's given this to me and I love doing this for you all you know I do so join me this Sunday at 6 p.m it will be via Zoom invite everyone that you can you all can you know go and host it at uh 
your sister's house, your friend's house, everybody got a Zoom, get me on your big screen. I'm going to share with you all what you need. But most important is for you to listen in tension because I do not believe now, now that I know better and what it entails, I don't believe that you can really do a vision board right in an hour like that, like on the call and then, or you go to a session. I'm not trying to step on any toes. <laughs> I'm just going to walk in these size 12s, okay? <laughs> so I give you the tools and then I tell you to go and how to do it so that you can implement and execute and do your vision board. Um, join me Sunday. Join, join me Sunday. Y'all, this literally is a winning season. This literally is a, a year of double portion. This is literally a year of divine favor. And guess what? That's why I do the vision board sessions now. We are still in this year. And I want everything that this year has to offer while also being in tune with what's ahead. So let's talk about it, all right? So if you haven't registered, go ahead and register for the vision board class. It's free. It's at no cost to you but your time. Um, it's six o'clock this Sunday. It's for everyone everyone uh because i know people always ask <laughs> which group is this for this vision for a workshop is for everyone you can be man a man you can be a woman you can be black white short tall fit curvy it's for everyone okay all right vision board workshop so um, I think that's all. I think that's all. Y'all know all my announcements. But yeah, so I pray that this lesson has impacted you. I pray that you can take the tools to share. I pray that just it was something, one thing that was shared to you, right? That will bless you, that will help you decommit. And I pray that you would take the rest of this month. Is decommit December for a reason. I have to repent it and thank God for allowing me the opportunity to come and speak to you because I was supposed to be doing this like a week ago. Yeah, so I just have to repent on that myself, but um, that's why I went live today because I was unctioned to go live. Um, and I'll be sharing more as I'm led to about the commit December, but you are gonna take this and make this a whole thing, right? Taylor, we may do a flyer and all this stuff. We may do it up. We need to do a decommitment December flyer, okay? Thank you, my love. Yeah, so yeah, we'll do that. We'll do a flyer, all this good stuff. So it can be a constant reminder when people ask you when it's not in alignment with what you're called to do. And if you may not have the capacity, um, and right, it's only so much that you can do. And we have just had a culture, especially in the South, Um, yeah, especially in the South, we, <laughs> we just tend to, uh, be, we just want to do so much, you know, just, I, I really, when, when I hear a lot of people, now I'm getting to women, when I really hear a lot of women that are always a yes person, I can immediately tell they're internally, internally suffering. And I know people are like, especially if you're that person, you're like, no, I just like to help others. Mm, I talk to too many women. You love to help others, I know. It's the wisdom and knowing when. And that's why you're stressed and burned out on the things that you have to do and can't do because you've overcommitted to someone else's ideas and someone else's activity. That's a whole nother workshop too. Mm-hmm. So decommit December, let's take inventory and then I'll see you all on this Sunday. Thank you all so much for joining. I appreciate your time and you all have an amazing evening. All right, until then, bye-bye.